Hello everybody and welcome to the FCS North Tournament. If you have not watched the previous video, go ahead and do that. But I will give you a quick recap. We are going to have an All-FCS Dynasty in NCAA Football 2006 as the first pass of the Colgate versus Albany game is intercepted by right outside linebacker Maddox. But there are 119 teams in the FBS in this game. And there are 79 FCS schools, formerly known as Division 1 AA, as Albany goes deep and hits their tight end for a touchdown. But we will have 79 FCS programs switching out with the Power 5 schools. And I will create I have created 48 teams. And we are having a tournament. We have a North tournament and a South tournament to decide 12 created FCS schools to also put into this dynasty so we will have 91 FCS schools and 28 FBS but obviously the FBS schools will be the smaller ones mostly Sunbelt and Mac schools and we're gonna see how that shakes out as Albany goes deep into the end zone for six once again that is Muhammad but there was a holding call but who do you guys want to see advance in this tournament let me know what school you're rocking with and I will definitely put you guys in the dynasty once we have our 12 teams, as Albany fumbles it, Colgate will pick it up, and the Raiders take over on the turnover there. They're going to go option. Here's Ross, very slow quarterback. All the teams in this tournament are academic. Now, once we have our 12 teams, we already have five, all West Coast teams. I explained that in the last video. If you have not watched it, go check that out. But once we get the other seven from this tournament, the top two teams, the winner from the North Tournament and the winner from the South Tournament, will get to select their own team types. And obviously, they're not going to get Juggernaut, but they can get whatever other ones they want as Colgate gets on the board here. Nice throw over to the right side, over the linebacker's head by Ross. Colgate strikes. It is 7 to 6. Albany did miss their extra point, and Ware gets bottled up but breaks free. And he's going to pick up a first down there. What a run. Looked like the defense had him back for no gain. And Ross is going to throw it deep again to his tight end. And that is McGinty all the way down to the 48-yard line. Both of these schools are from New York. Colgate is located in Hamilton, New York. Albany, obviously, is in Albany, New York. The Great Danes versus the Colgate Raiders as Ross goes over the middle of Walker down to the 28 yard line I'm letting you guys know now I've played seven or eight games in the North tournament so far and all of them are very high scoring affairs and a lot of highlights so I'm going to put two games into every video that I put out for this tournament so this will have Colgate and Albany and the next game is Duquesne. I pronounced it Duquesne in the last video. I do apologize for that. But it is Duquesne, the Dukes, versus the Bucknell Bison in the game immediately after this one. As Colgate is on top, 14-6. to They hand it off to the big fullback, and he is rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, trucking through defenders. Picks up a first down there. Ross looking to throw it. Pump fakes. Rolling out right side, throws it back to the left in double coverage, and it is somehow caught by Stewart inside the 20-yard line. Ross over 150 passing yards in the first half. What a throw from the quarterback there. In the, inside the five-yard line, Hughes will take it into the end zone. Colgate on top, 21-6. To and not a lot of time left here in the first half. And here is where? No, it is play action. Hill bombs it deep, and that is caught by Crossley. The defender dove and missed, and Crossley is gone. Unbelievable. With five seconds left on the clock, Albany gets a huge touchdown pass. An 86-yard bomb to Crossley, and Albany is right back in this ball game. They're going to go for two points here as well. And they give it off to Ware, and he walks into the end zone, juking out a defender. Now into the second half, Ross is going to throw a screen pass. It was a setup screen to the right, and he throws a post pattern over the middle for a huge pickup. Defender was not expecting it. 
First and 10. Olsen up the middle. Big fullback gets another 10-yard carry right up the gut. Let me know what you guys think of these uniforms. I tried to base them off of the pictures that I found online as Martinez gets a touchdown catch from Ross. But I pulled up some pictures on Google and tried to base the uniforms off the pictures as best as I could with what I was given to work with in NCAA football 2006, which was not a whole lot. I will be posting videos of each team's creation and I will be putting them all in a separate playlist as Daly fumbles the ball and Colgate recovers it at the 28 yard line and on the next play Ross throws it out deep into the end zone and that is a touchdown Colgate Raiders strike again 35 to 14 they are just pouring it on as Stewart gets a nice 28 yard touchdown catch but let me know what you guys think of these uniforms it's going to be a little difficult. I haven't created all 48 teams yet. I've created most of the North teams. And there's not a whole lot of logo choices for the team names that we have to work with. There's a lot of unique names like the, the Campbell Fighting Camels. As Walker gets bottled up and breaks free to the right side, he's going to take this one to the house. Colgate just pouring it on again. Oh my. Albany is not having any luck here in the second half as that is a 66 yard touchdown run. But back to the logos, there is not a whole lot to work with when you're trying to create unique schools like Campbell Fighting Camels. And one of the strangest names ever, the Presbyterian Blue Hose. I'm not really sure about that one. But I am working on the uniforms, trying to get them as good as I can get them as Coleman gets a nice catch over the middle tries to hurdle a defender it's taken down at the 47 yard line Albany trying to string together some a few plays in a row here to get a nice drive going to get back into this ball game so it's 42 to 14 last play of the third quarter over the middle to Muhammad and he somehow gets into the end zone it looked like he was going to go down there was a bunch of defenders converging around him and he somehow squeezed through there and snuck into the end zone for a touchdown. 42 to 21 is now the score. Colgate still on top, headed into the fourth quarter. Oh, check that. There's one more play before the fourth quarter as Albany kicks it off deep. And that is Hodge from his own two-yard line. Going to return this one up the middle. And he breaks free past the 40-yard line down to the 45-yard line. Awesome return there by Hodge, almost broke free for a score. Later on in their drive, Ross options out left side, pitches it to Hughes, and he's going to walk into the end zone with a minute and 16 seconds left on the clock. Hughes telling the crowd that he can't hear them, and it is quiet here in Albany. You can hear a pin drop in this stadium. Albany back on offense, daily. In there, the backup quarterback, their starter was injured. He's rolling out left, throwing it deep to the middle of the field, and that is caught by Waters all the way down to the 44-yard line. Huge pickup as Albany's trying to get some extra points here before this game is over. Daly looking to throw it again, goes deep right side this time. Deflected and caught by Coleman, and he's going to take this one into the end zone. An unlucky bounce for Colgate, but a perfect bounce for the Great Danes. Very unfortunate for that defensive back. He was in perfect spot right there. Made a nice play on the ball. Coleman was just in the right place at the right time. But that will do it. Colgate advances to the second round of the North Tournament. And Albany is done. Good game from Colgate. Very explosive offense. A lot of big plays from them. Some big plays from Albany too. Just not enough stops. And too many mistakes. And that cost them this ball game. Colgate will advance and they will play in their own stadium next week against the winner of our next game. Taking a look at the stats here, two turnovers from Albany and five penalties for 71 yards. Unbelievable. Colgate puts up 21 points in the third quarter and seven in the fourth to pull away from the Albany Great Danes. Bucknell Bison traveling to take on the Duquesne Dukes. 
This is going to be an interesting matchup. Both teams from the state of Pennsylvania. And here's the first play from Duquesne. And Pittman gets the pitch all the way down to the 43-yard line and tack on five yards for a face mask penalty. Second and five. Morton options out right side. Nice block by the fullback. Morton's going to keep it himself and dive down to the 27-yard line. Huge run for the pocket passing quarterback running the triple option. Optioning out left side again is Morton. Nice block by the fullback. Pittman gets the pitch. Jukes and taken down at the 13 yard line. Dukizny really loves this triple option attack and they're gonna go at it once again. Right side, Morton will pitch it and Pittman's gonna walk it into the end zone. Touchdown, Dukes. They are on top first, 7-0. To Bucknell Bison are located in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Duquesne Dukes located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Steel City. As Bucknell is going to throw it deep here. Wide open is Keister. I think that's how you pronounce that name. First down, Bison. Huge throw. The defender slipped, it looked like, on this artificial turf. And Logan's going to throw it again here. Pump fakes. Goes deep over the middle. And that is picked off by Smith. And he's got some space in front of him. Returning it up to the 25-yard line. Huge interception there by the Dukes. Morton looking to throw it here. Goes left side. Caught by Perry down to the 45-yard line. Big pickup for the tight end. But Duquesne does nothing with it. Bucknell back on offense. And Johnson breaks free down to the 45-yard line. Huge run, weaving in and out of traffic, getting to the second level. Safety finally chased him down. Logan will option out left side. He is slower than Molasses as well. He's going to pitch it. There's Johnson, who takes it out of bounds at the 33-yard line for another first down. That'll end the first quarter with the Duquesne Dukes on top of the Bucknell Bison 7-0. And the Dukes will throw it deep here, caught by Hubbard. Right in the face of the defender, down at the 43-yard line. Huge pickup through the sky. Looking to add to their lead. Can they go up two touchdowns here as Morton pump fakes, throws it right side. Nice tightrope act on the sideline by Davis inside the 10-yard line. Another huge pickup through the air. Beautiful corner route. Nice job on the sideline, keeping his feet inbounds. Third and goal for the Dukes. Morton will option left side, and he's going to take it himself, walking into the end zone untouched. The Dukes on top now 14 to nothing, dominating the Bucknell Bison. Bison back on offense. Logan looking to throw it over the middle. Caught by Smith at the 48-yard line in double coverage. A nice spinning catch here. Passes a little bit behind him. He came back and got it. First and 20 for the Bison. Logan hit as he throws, and he throws it over the linebacker's head to McCoy. And he'll pick up about 30 yards and a first down. Beautiful pass just over the outstretched hand of the linebacker. McCoy does the rest, getting a bunch of extra yardage after the catch. Logan going to throw it again here. Only a minute and a half to go in the first half. Logan hit as he throws it, and that is intercepted by Perry, the linebacker who just missed the deflection, and he returns it up to the 43-yard line. Anthony Logan is injured. He will not return to this game. Backup quarterback Henderson in the game. Throws it deep. Deflected. Intercepted by Ellison. That would end the half. Now into the third quarter. Henderson options out right side. Here's Johnson getting the pitch. Finding the edge in the open field. And nobody is going to catch him. The corner dives and misses. That is a touchdown for the Bucknell Bison. A touchdown that they desperately needed. As they had a goose egg on the scoreboard up until this point. Nice attempt here by the defensive back. Trying to get up to him. It's not fast enough. Duquesne back on offense, big fullback up the middle, nice juke move. He picks up 17 and a first down. He's averaging 7.1 yards a carry in the game, my goodness. Morton will pitch right side, fumbled it, and Turner will dive on it for Bucknell. And the Bison take over after that costly fumble. They have all the momentum now, they could tie the ball game up here. 
on this drive. First down, Henderson scanning all day to throw and somehow fits it through there to Johnson and he drags the defender down to the 16 yard line. I'm not sure how he fit that pass through there. Very nice in between two defenders. Beautiful catch and he drags the guy for a bunch of extra yardage. Henderson will keep it himself, runs up the middle, and he is destroyed and injured his knee on the play. He will not return, so the Bucknell Bison are down to their third string quarterback. And here he is, his first pass, and that is intercepted by Hill over the middle, and he'll return it down to the 10-yard line. My goodness gracious, what else could go wrong for the Bucknell Bison here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? Bison back on offense though, Dukesny did nothing with it, here's Johnson weaving in and out, nice juke moves and he is going to take another one to the house. Who needs a quarterback when you've got Johnson in the backfield? Looked like he was bottled up again. Couple runs here so far early on in this tournament where the running backs are just bottled up and contained and they somehow break free and get it into the end zone. Wilkerson, backup quarterback for the Dukesny Dukes. Fits a nice pass into Hubbard on the sideline for six points. Nice 35-yard touchdown bomb. Defender never turned his head. Or he might have, but it was at the last second. He never saw the ball. But now back to Johnson here. Following his blocks right side. Breaks the tackle. Somehow squeezes through there. Out of bounds at midfield. He's got 192 yards on six carries. That is ridiculous. Keith looking to throw it again here though. His first attempt since the interception. He keeps it himself though. Nice stiff arm. Still going. Out of bounds at the 28. But there is a face mask call at the end of the run. So that will move him up to the 24. Backup running back Jones gets a carry. Nice juke. And they strip the ball from him. Ellison will recover it. Running in the open field down to the 22 yard line. Another costly mistake by the Bucknell Bison offense. Dukesny back on offense here. And they can't be stopped except for when they do that. Pitched it to the running back. Looked like it might have bounced off of his face. And Bucknell has another chance here. Already in the red zone of Dukesny. Keith looking to throw it again. All day. Throws it into the end zone. Deflected and somehow caught by Abrams. A nice sliding catch. Nice deflection here by the safety. Just unfortunate that the wide receiver was in the area at the time. Here's Johnson. He fumbles it, but it is recovered in the end zone for a touchdown for the Bucknell Bison. And they will tie this ballgame up at 21 apiece. The ensuing kickoff to Dukesny. All the way down to the five-yard line. That is Marshall on the return. Nice blocking. He jukes a couple guys out in the open field. He might take it all the way, and he will. Unbelievable. As soon as Bucknell catches a break, that happens. They just can't tackle him. And nobody even touched him on that return. Bucknell, another chance here, though. Back on offense. Pitch out to Johnson. He's got a first down and more. About a 15-yard pickup. But it is called back on a holding penalty. First and 19. Keith, play action. Over the middle. First down catch for Abrams. Nice spin move. And there's another holding call on the Bucknell Bison. So many mistakes in this game. First and 29 for the third string quarterback, Keith. And he fits it over the defender to Johnson, who picks up 26 yards. Huge pickup there. Second and three. Play action from Keith again. Over the middle. That's Smith wide open. Past the 40. Nice juke move. And he's in the open field. Off to the races. And he is going to take it to the house. Huge touchdown play right there. Unbelievable. They were in a first and 29 situation. And they somehow come away with a 54-yard touchdown pass from their third string quarterback. Unbelievable. You can't make this stuff up. Dukesny back on offense. Here is Morton launching it deep to midfield and caught in double coverage. I believe that name is Pino. Nice play there. Huge pickup. About a 37-yard dart. Morton's going to throw it again here. 
Scanning the field, launching it in triple coverage, deflected away on third down, but there is a roughing the passer penalty. Another mistake on the Bison. Would have been fourth and 18. Dukes just looking to run out the clock here. That is pitched somehow, and Pittman is in the open field down to the 11-yard line. Unbelievable play. That is a face mask on the tackle on the quarterback, but it doesn't matter. 15 seconds to go. They'll hand it off to the fullback, and he will get it in the end zone. That is a touchdown for the Dukes. They go on top, 35-28 with 12 seconds to go. Here's the kickoff. Smith back at his 8-yard line. Nice blocking there, returns it up to the 35 yard line, giving his quarterback a chance. Last play of the game, Keith launches it deep, caught by Smith and he goes down, the game is over, he also injured his head on the play and the Dukes, the Dukes are victorious. They will go on to the second round and take on the Colgate Raiders. In our next two games you guys will see Valparaiso taking on Butler and Monmouth taking on the Bryant Bulldogs. I'm excited to bring that one to you as well. Those are two really good games. A lot of action. A lot of highlights to show you. But let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought of these two games. What, do you, what you thought of the outcome and what you think the outcomes of the next two games will be. Take a look at the stats here, 490 yards of offense for Bucknell, but so many mistakes cost them this game. Well, that is going to do it for this video, guys. I will see you next week, possibly, with the other two games. Until then, take it easy, guys.